Hot takes, get your hot takes here. Hot take coming through. Choo choo! Kentaro Miura's Berserk is a great manga. Like, a really, really great manga. At least artistically, I don't think many are willing to argue otherwise. And people have been dying to see it get a complete anime adaptation. Which can only happen if Miura ever finishes writing the damn thing. However, I have come to the conclusion that this will never ever happen. At least in a way that really does Miura's incredible artistry. Justice! Now that makes me sound pessimistic and fiercely pro-manga like your everyday Berserk fan. But on the contrary, I believe 1997's Berserk TV series to be the ideal adaptation. Not the perfect adaptation, but there is no such thing as a perfect adaptation, so quit your bitching. And that crafting another anime akin to it is currently impossible for modern anime, or to be more specific, computer anime. Now, for your information, I am not talking about CGI! Since the 2000s, anime has been made almost exclusively on computers, instead of the hand-painted cell animation we used to get. One quick disclaimer that this will not be focusing on the story or the characters from Berserk. This is going to be from a purely visual standpoint, examining the difficulties of Miura's manga, why the 1997's adaptation works, and why the Berserk films, recent TV anime, and any conceivable future future computer anime adaptation cannot. Mira is an incredible artist, and the first thing people point out is the level of immaculate detail in practically every frame. This detail is the first and frankly only thing people seem to point out in explaining the immense difficulty in adapting his art into animation. There's certainly an element of truth to this. The more complicated and realistic an element is, the more painstaking it gets to keep characters on model and fluid. No amount of budget or talented animators will change that fact, but what's funny is, <laughs> this did not stop 97's Berserk from having a nearly identical level of detail to its art. How does it get away with this? Its secret is not to animate. Or rather, animate as much as is necessary so the audience doesn't think their video froze. Move the eyes and mouth. Use subtle head and hand motions. Animate the cape or hair, but nothing else here. Repeat animation there. This is really all that needs to be animated for a successful Berserk adaptation. For me, it's not just Miura's detail that impresses me, but it's how picturesque he makes every panel. Over half of his manga belongs in an art museum. This does not need to be super fluidly animated to impress. I get it. It's a big battle scene. I, for one, don't need to see every solitary person have their own little fight. That's not the point of Berserk. Anyone who's experienced the story can tell you that. 97's Berserk understood this and implemented stunning storyboard direction and powerful art direction in its backgrounds and stills, particularly using a technique called postcard memories that are anime-specific art pieces that made scenes stand out with that level of immense detail without the need to animate it. It's a signature technique of my all-time favorite director, Osamu Dezaki, and this approach is something I think computer anime is currently incapable of creating. Now hold your rape horses, let me explain. I'm not one of those elitists that dislike all computer or modern anime, though I do respectfully prefer cell animation, but this isn't about that. It's about the trend of Japanese animators growing further and further towards the use of kinetic anime over picturesque anime. Look at what is considered appealing today. It's not a good shot that you can screen cap, it's a moment you can gif. Technology in anime is advancing to where there's no need for the tried and true tricks of limited animation. The tricks 97 Berserk used just aren't appealing to any animation studio these days. The approach is just not something that'll ever be revisited again, cell animation or not. They hardly animate fire or smoke or blood in 2D anymore. They'll just use visual effects to make it easier or more believable. I'm not really talking about CG necessarily. This isn't going to be another video complaining about shitty CG. It's just another tool they use to make kinetic anime instead of picturesque anime. The difference between the two is important to distinguish because this has to do with adapting a manga to animation. Some manga don't translate well into anime, and some anime don't translate well into manga. 
Kinetic anime deliver on being in motion. A static image of it doesn't tell the whole story, but it's the sequence of stills that does. A notable example of this is Gunbuster. The Super Inazuma kick does not make an impact as a manga panel like it does in animation, so it doesn't work as a manga. That's also why you don't hear about Cowboy Bebop's manga ever talked about. The show is a kinetic experience. Or as a modern example, Gurren Lagann. Yes, there's a manga. No, nobody talks about it. On the flip side, Neon Genesis Evangelion is famously picturesque. While featuring some stunning animation, the bulk of the series is strong thanks to its storyboarding and framing. It's a pretty show to look at, which is why it ultimately serves well as a manga. There are obviously plenty of exceptions due to talented animators or mangaka, but when a mangaka is so good at what he does that his story can't inherently improve with animation, well, there you go. Berserk doesn't inherently improve by being animated. But shapes, says Berserk Tired number 479. There's a ton of kinetic energy in Berserk. Look at how many times gut swings that hunk of iron you doubt could ever be called a sword. And to that I say, there's an adaptation fit just for you. This is what you get when kinetic-minded animators take on a picturesque property. The director's other known project, TQ, is bombastically kinetic-oriented, so that is the approach he took in these recent adaptations. There are ambitious and innovative shots, but more often than not, less is more when it comes to Berserk. I want to reiterate that the fight scenes with apostles or big armies are not the focus of Berserk. They are a means to an end. What's important in the fight between Guts and Zod is not the swinging of their swords, but the strategy and psychological beats. But that's not just seen here, it's in the movies too. This is a little gray area since movies are traditionally more kinetic oriented because they have the time and means to justify so much motion. Examples being End of Evangelion versus its TV series, or Oshi's Pat Labor or Ghost in the Shell versus their TV counterparts. This is really where I think the problem in adapting Berserk becomes clearest. The direction does not seem to be use what's given to you, but rather use what animation can do. There's a few shots in these movies where the camera just shakes in a way to disorient the viewer, but it takes away the potential stillness the manga may have employed. The idea of not making a 100% faithful adaptation is often very sound and justifiable logic. The creators don't want it to be a carbon copy of the source material. Great vid by Roger Smith on that topic. The problem is that oftentimes these choices in the case of Berserk almost never capture the same level of impact as Miura's manga. If it was an alternate take, absolutely fine. Ashino Joe, for instance, is a prominent example of this. But what is the difference between A, watching a lance impale itself through five or six heads and then retracting back, or B, see the lance launch at someone's head, then a cutaway shot of a reaction face or something, and slowly panning back to see that it went through not one, but five or six heads. There's just something clever or engaging in direction like that, and it would be way less difficult to animate. That's more or less the difference we're talking about. This isn't so much a case of animators trying too hard, but more that they're showing off their abilities without really needing to. The director, storyboarders, and animators just have to be on the same artistic level as Miura, and it's like Miura's vision trumps the other guy's vision every single time. I'm really not trying to sound like I'm sucking the manga's horse cock, but unfortunately it's true, at least in the recent adaptations cases. I'm of the opinion that 97 actually did capture that impact. Super Eyepatch Wolf's video on why you should watch slash read Berserk says it the best. There's a great use of quiet in Miura's story. And nothing says quiet like... In short, I think I'm saying computer anime can't, or rather, chooses not to match the silence and stillness of Berserk with its preference of kinetic over picturesque animation. <gasps> This might seem like a problem any manga adaptation has to deal with, but it's a serious predicament with Miura's manga. Berserk lives in black and white. There are hundreds of shots that I can't even begin to imagine in color. 
Heck, the pivotal characters of the story, Guts and Griffith, are opposed as black and white. Miura does such an incredible job at using what he has with just ink and shading. That being said, I don't have to be reminded that Berserk has existed in color before, in promotional and volume cover art, color pencil illustrations, and plenty of pretty stellar fan colorings of certain panels. Not to mention, of course, 97's Berserk, which I find to have superb color design. So it's not impossible to have Berserk in color, I just think it's unlikely to see in a modern anime adaptation. I swear bashing modern anime like this is not my intention. I really dig modern anime for its own reasons. It's just that for the result we're trying to get, I haven't been given reason to believe computer anime could pull this off. Even picturing the highest quality treatment you could give Berserk right now, which ideally would be a long form OVA series like Helsing Ultimate or Gundam Thunderbolt. But I don't even think this level would suit Berserk. Going off how the manga looks in official art, the best word to describe the color design is grimy. Everything looks dirty, battered, oily, filthy, rough. For some reason, computer anime can't pull this off. Everything has to be glossy or shiny or clean. Gritty and sketchy is the best it can do, and it's just not good enough. But a lot of that is down to color choice. A lot of times, computer anime's idea of moody, dark, and grimy are to use dull colors. Bland, boring, Ugly, dull, dull, dullahan. The colors on the Berserk volumes pop. 97's color design pops. Being dark and being colorful are not mutually exclusive. The movie's colors are like pastel, so it's almost there. Not there enough though. Honestly, modern anime can be way more colorful than cell animation ever was more often than not. But another reason why 97 and the manga volumes succeed is because of how textured and artsy the backgrounds are. Because they complement the hatchwork in Miura's art, while computer anime seem more concerned with imitating reality and blending in with the character models than being artistically bold. <gasps> There's a skill that only seasoned, really expert manga authors can pull off. If you don't know what I'm talking about, paneling is the organization and sequence of manga panels. How the eyes follow down and across the page, what to show and what not to show, when to use a vertical shot, horizontal shot, full page panel, two page spread, pacing miniature cliffhangers on the turn of a page. Miura is one of the absolute best at this, and it's not something easily conveyed in animation, which is single shot, single shot, instead of having two or three images in your brain at once. Unless computer anime uses split screens, as it uniquely has for some recent productions, it just won't hold the same impact. And I don't think anyone will want Berserk animated with split screens. I think 97's Berserk only pulled it off because it sometimes literally used panels from the manga as postcard memories and panned it in similar ways that one's eyes might. And down to it, that's my reasoning for why I don't think computer anime can ever do the Berserk manga justice. I put justice in quotations because that's the word Berserk fans often use when they aren't getting what they want in 97's adaptation, or the movies, or recent TV series. But really, what's so bad about that? The manga is still fantastic, and at least Berserk has been fortunate enough to get so many adaptations. Imagine how Vagabond fans feel. Imagine how Vinland Saga fans feel. Kingdom fans? Any of Naoki Urasawa's manga besides Monster and Master Keen and Yawara fans? And besides, for as good a manga author as Miura is, the man's still gotta finish the damn thing.